Why did you choose to be anti-Zionist? Uh, well, um, I uh, did my research and started look at, listening to narratives outside of those that I was raised from. Okay. And um, the, the context for my family history, I'll, I'll just sort of set the standard there with that, is um, so my great-grandpa um, immigrated into British Palestine at the time, um, went through uh, the War of Independence, and then basically my grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins all are Israeli and only have Israeli citizenship. It's only my mum and my brother who were born there, thanks to my dad, okay. that we all have dual citizenship. And that's how I'm British Israeli. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so do you, um, do you actually support the two straight state solution? I'm, or? I'm on the, I, I don't think it's a realistic approach. Yes. Um, I, I think, uh, and this is just my opinion, um, from the, from the uh, inception of Israel as a country, the fact that it is a Jewish state that essentially follows the message of Jews first above all else, displaces Palestinians right. and their right yes. to the land as yes. well. And uh, I think if Israel hypothetically was to exist at all, it would have to rewrite a lot of its laws from the ground up in the Knesset and as well as its social attitudes. Yes. Yes. And that is, you basically have to completely rewrite the country. Yes. And it's but ridiculous. But currently, currently what, what is your opinion? I, I have an opinion that, mm -hmm. that currently the state is a racist state, it's an apartheid state, mm -hmm. it's a genocidal state as mm -hmm. we have seen, mm -hmm. and it's also a terrorist state. This is, mm. this is my opinion. These are mm -hmm. very yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of, uh, some people think it's a very harsh opinion, but mm. I, I don't know why when it comes yeah. to Israel, yeah. it's harsh. And when, it, <laughs> when we're talking about Russia yeah. or ISIS yeah. and other entities around the world I agree. committing I, I the acts of terrorism. I do think it's very interesting that yeah. there is, because I think, um, I do think that America and England and a lot of the West sees, and we might agree with this, this sees Israel as like a, a post for um, like their opinions and their oh, standpoint the last, and their influence. One of the last colonial outposts. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do think that, <laughs> I do think that... Um, and, the, and that's what you're advocating. You're saying that give some of the land to the last colonial outposts. When you say two-state solution works, or you pro you, you're you a proponent of it, you're actually claiming that we must give part of the land to a terrorist entity or a colonial entity, for that matter. I, I can see how it may look that way, to yeah. be honest. But it does, it's, it's, it's I real. I regularly, I think that my mm. friend here is really mm. rather good and articulate. Yeah. Mm. If you focus, if you go, we can do this anytime. Mm. But, but I... I won't do it, I'm not running <laughs> no, away. Okay, okay no problem, sure no problem. I'm trying to hand the camera space yeah. to her because I think she's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this is, this is very interesting because we need more Jewish voices yeah. to talk about this. I think, because, yes. it, because a lot of people out there, they think mm -hmm. that all all the Jews in the world. Yeah, they've got that prejudice. Yeah, they, they've got that. Yeah, I also yeah, think that yeah. one of the things I had to overcome, because um, remember, as a Jewish, British, Israeli, I have the Jewish diaspora narrative, yeah. and I also have the Israeli narrative, right. and I also have those social circles that I need to, well, to to even approach. Um, narratives outside right. is seen as a very strong stigma and let alone to have those conversations at home mm. that's a completely other uh, ball yeah. of can of worms yeah. you know and I do think that um, one of the hardest things to do because I do think for uh, people that are um, pro-Israel but also people that are pro-Palestine um, you can see that a lot of a lot of the conversations are just within their own communities mm. and People aren't willing to, well, not maybe that they're not willing, but they, they have a stigma of even the idea of approaching and speaking to people of the other narrative. Right. And I think it's really important to have an open mind and listen to, listen to opinions that you may think you disagree with, yeah. but then come to a realization of there's a lot of parallels yeah. here. But do you, do you think this current uh, situation in Gaza mm -hmm. has actually changed the minds of many young Israelis and uh, Jewish? Okay. Well, uh, okay. So there are a bunch of um, uh, 
got there are there is a bunch of left wing organizations in Israel that have started to gain some traction. Right. We're talking about the Omding Bayahad movement, which is standing together, talking about breaking the silence. Yeah. Um, we're also talking about diaspora movements which are really starting to grow outside of Israel in the Jewish circles. But but people like Abby, what's her name? That journalist. I'm not sure. Uh, she's called Abby. Does anyone know that journalist's name? Abby. Uh, huh? She's uh, she's a, she she went recently to Israel and she interviewed a lot of Israelis. Abby, Abby Martin. Thank okay. you, Abby okay. Martin. Mm -hmm. She's a journalist and she has interviewed a lot of Israelis and she thinks mm -hmm. that Israelis are all genocidal. I mean, she's saying there yeah. are one or two percent, maybe, yeah. you know, who don't agree with the government. Mm -hmm. But majority of the, the overwhelming majority mm -hmm. of the Israelis, yeah. they are speaking a genocidal language. They uh, want yeah. the Arabs mm -hmm. or the Palestinians, for that matter, to be wiped out. Yeah. So I think I think that um, uh, no, of course. <laughs> Sorry. I think that those that think the Israelis that have opinions alongside mine. Yeah are definitely a major a minority right. are definitely a minority i do also think that the narrative that you're saying of how they are framed how they're framing a, de a denial of genocide and and, and un a complete lack of acknowledgement to the suffering of palestinian civilians right. i also agree what, i do what, think that's present why is that the case i mean so, is there's censorship um and also okay so so at home we've got the Israeli news going on like pretty often, uh, N12 and everything. Like, but how can you brainwash? So, Walaikum salam. Yeah. How can you brainwash an entire population? Uh, I mean, I'm sure was, Israelis you, are very educated people. You get born and raised in it, and right. and, and you have there is there is generational trauma that gets exasperated as part of the narrative, as part of the right. excuse. The Holocaust, and, 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 the and Holocaust, trauma, yeah. and any any form of any form of attack that the West Bank or Gaza has done, and as retaliation to what the right. uh, Knesset has been doing, um, right. it's it's always from the perspective of secondary and that's because uh, when you look at the if you ever look at Israeli news you'll notice that um, currently post October 7th the narrative is focused on the hostages and only the hostages no Correct. mention of the effect of um, Palestinian citizens who um, have no active involvement with their government or even uh, the policies uh, or, yes, or, or like you know maybe maybe like their maybe their cousin was involved and then all of a sudden like they're now part of, they're deemed by the IDF as part of this network and everything yeah it is a really it is a very racist approach if you ask me it's my opinion and I do think that um, this is really stemming to, from the foundation of the country itself. The foundation of its country, with it being Jews having this homeland according to our ethno-religious roots, yes. above all else, mm. and no matter what, we must protect it with generational trauma feeding into that instinct, has led to this really extreme response and this narrative that just has spread through what, three generations now? Yeah. Three generations of people being born into this narrative yeah, yeah. and born into, and also where going into the IDF is mandatory. It's, mm. um, uh, you've got forced conscription, not forced, and mandatory you get conscription. And conditioned when you're there. Yes. Doing and, the training, you're, yes. you're and, and what's really made interesting, into a nationalist. But, but then also, uh, coincidentally, that's also how the Breaking the Silence movement came out. Mm. Because um, people that grew up into the system and then all of a sudden were stationed in the West Bank or stationed in the Gaza border. And they see for themselves the narrative which is not presented to Israeli civilians on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. It is completely ignored. Yeah. They are not aware of what is really the real violence and the real catastrophe of a lot of innocent people there that's going yeah. on. Yeah. And it's but I think things are changing now because social media mm -hmm. has enabled many Israeli youngsters mm -hmm. to see the other side, albeit in a, in a, yeah. in a very limited capacity. Mm -hmm. But many yeah. young, young is because they're the future. Yes. Okay, Netanyahu is not the future. Uh, agreed. Netanya Netanyahu agreed. is going to die agreed. Yeah. <laughs> sooner or later. Okay. Sooner or later. And, and yeah. be better sooner than later. I hope that, you know. Yeah. Uh, a genocidal maniac like that, mm. God takes him as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, this lady is actually, you know. Yeah. So yeah, maybe. A little yeah. closer. I so, don't know. <laughs> so uh, 
Yeah, the, the... <laughs> can we, guys, can we move back? Can we move back? I'm because having trouble we have company, sorry. Yeah. yeah, 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 let's go there. Do you need let's a hand with it? Sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> now she realized that <laughs> she was actually doing something. Yeah, yeah I, I prefer this background. Okay. Oh, yeah, we've got yeah. some nice green. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I believe that it will happen eventually. Humanity mm -hmm. will prevail. Justice will prevail. Look, yes. look, there is a lot of misunderstanding even within the Israeli um, mm -hmm. citizens uh, mm -hmm. uh, that the Arabs want them dead. Yeah. The Arabs. And, and that's where a lot of the, yeah. pr the, the yeah. fighting protective instinct yeah. of yeah. like, because yeah. in in their minds they yeah. there is a really strong idea that it's Israel or we don't exist. Exactly. And this is the propaganda. It's that fear. That's yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's 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 a deliberately instilled fear mm -hmm. that serves the purpose of the IDF or mm -hmm. the Israeli ruling establishment. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a false narrative. Mm -hmm. This is what I have been dealing with personally because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a historian mm -hmm. and I'm, I've been talking about how the Jewish people mm -hmm. flourished mm. for over a thousand years mm. within the domain of Islam mm. yes. when the Jewish people were heavily persecuted in Western Europe mm -hmm. okay I don't know how much of history how uh, much of history you know uh, I mean all the pogroms oh and, yes yeah, um, yeah. so uh, I my family's Ashkenazi okay and uh, the, my great-grandpa that came into British Palestine right he was um, he and his wife ended up being the only survivors of his family every every Ashkenazi Jew has a story like this yeah that's, but that's Ashkenazis were yeah. always a minority historically speaking yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it were the Sephardic Jews mm. who were the majority I know there, there is this conflict between the Sephardic 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 Jew, yeah. Jewry yeah. and uh, yeah. Ashkenazi Jewry yeah. but for over a thousand years people mm. like Jacob Lesnar he's a Jewish historian from the US mm -hmm. he has he's talked about it that uh, for over a thousand years, nearly a thousand years, uh, the Sephardic Jews were the majority, mm. okay? Uh, because they were living in the Muslim domains. Mm -hmm. That's why they were called the Sephardic. The Sephard was basically... Oh, they were um, uh, expelled from the Iberian Peninsula and then came th to war yeah. through uh, Turkey, Northern America. North, yeah. Yeah. Turkey, yeah. Turkey, and then uh, North Africa. Yeah. First, these were the first, those who did escape, mm. th those who did survive. Mm -hmm. So for over a thousand years, the overwhelming majority of the Jewish people were living in the Muslim lands. Mm -hmm. the, the oldest uh, Jewish population in the world was in Iraq. Mm -hmm. At one point, half the population of Baghdad, mm -hmm. okay, was out of 200,000, mm -hmm. 80,000 were Jewish people. Yeah. This is according to the testimony of this lady who who, who, who visited Baghdad uh, in the early 20th century. I forgot her name. She was an archaeologist and mm -hmm. she was very active with Lawrence of Arabia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she was one of the political agents mm. and she advised King, the first King Faisal of Iraq. Mm. The okay, long, long history, long story. She actually describes Baghdad as, to some extent, a Jewish city. Mm. And yeah. You you had 80,000. Yeah. Jewish people living in Baghdad out yeah. of 200,000 population, the, which is which is phenomenal. Yeah. So, so many case studies are like this as well. It's same yeah. with the Romani Jews in Greece. Yeah. Um, in uh, uh, one of uh, one of the coastal cities, one of the port cities, it was essentially um, a Jewish people that created so uh, it was through textiles and just yeah. um, local business. Like, they flourished Absolutely. the city. Almost everything. Yeah. Everything that was profitable. The Jewish mm -hmm. people were flourishing mm. during the Ottoman uh, period in Ottoman territories. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a really, there was a very strong history of coexistence as 100%. well. The, the, there are Jewish scholars who claim that from the year 12, uh, sorry, 900 to 1200, 300 mm -hmm. years, this was the mm. golden age of the House of Israel under mm. the domain of Islam. Mm. And this was predominantly in Islamic Spain, in mm -hmm. Al-Andalus, mm -hmm. where we had prime ministers, generals, scholars, mm -hmm. poets, philosophers, mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, Rambam, famous Maimonides, okay. was born in Cordoba. Oh, okay. And he died in Egypt, in Ayyubid, Egypt. He was the private physician to the Sultan himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is the history that's not told by the state, the Isra why would yes. they? Why would they? No, yeah. to, to the Israeli people. Yeah. If the Israeli people were to realize <laughs> mm. that we have no threat yeah. coming from the Arabs or the Muslims in general, yeah. because we have we have a history of 1,000 years. Yeah. It's so vast, yeah. it's so huge, it's so rich, it's I, unbelievable. I know. But the Israeli propaganda and doing injustice to the people of Israel as well, I using think, them for their... Yeah. yeah, I think what can be very interesting as well is how um, uh, you know how post uh, the 
a lot of Mizrahi Jews when um, Israel was founded, uh, call it Nakba, call it uh, 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 War of Independence, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, they didn't want the state to exist. Right. And when it, when it was founded under an incredibly bloody pretense right. um, and ve extremely violent and mm. like absolutely disastrous of like the outcomes of it, right. the, um, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, uh, wh whiplash. There was a really strong whiplash effect to the Jewish citizens in the in these neighboring territories, and this ended up feeding you mean into, in the Arab in yes, the Arab territory. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this is ended why. up feeding into the territories where yeah. you've got like Operation Magic Carpet and yeah. and and so forth, where they're basically mass. No, there, there there is this theory that some of the the Zionists were deliberately mm -hmm. carrying out acts of violence mm. in uh, some of these Muslim territories for, mm -hmm. the, for the Jewish people to feel threatened mm. enough for them to move to Israel yeah. because they needed people to move to Israel. Yeah. So a lot of Yemenis and Iraqis yeah. mm -hmm. and Moroccan Jews mm -hmm. and Tunisians and Libyans, mm -hmm. they ended up in, uh, in what came to be known as the state of Israel. Yeah, and, so, and they are diehard for Israel because they're, they're re, they're, they're within their lifetime of experience or their grandparents' lifetime mm. of experience, mm was of absolute violence of their um, of their original homelands. Well, yeah. na uh, their native homelands, maybe but not. Do, do you feel there's enough, hmm. there is enough Jewish element hmm. that's influential enough to make a difference I currently think today in the world? This is something that I'm really hopeful for. And I think as, as, a, as a younger generation that has more optimism just in, in itself, I think we are seeing both because there are there are two places where this where convincing needs to be done. Convincing needs to be done in the Jewish diaspora, yes. and convincing needs to be done to Israeli citizens. How do we do that? So I what think, do you propose? I think the easiest place to start, and we're seeing that now, especially with um, the from back in 2018, where there were those peaceful protests on the Gazan borders that the IDF then struck back on. Hmm. Um, the narrative that a lot of um, diaspora Jews are starting to wake up to is that there is a really, really strong and heavily biased narrative that has been placed on us right. essentially since birth in these circles. Yes. And we need to look further out and see that mistreatment is not, it's absolutely not the, not the answer and not what we're looking for. And with movements like, if not now, when, um, and... Uh, <laughs> there are no mics yeah. on her. <laughs> And she's the one who's talking. <laughs> Wait, how many have you got that? Oh, I don't, I don't I'm know. losing I count. Don't, don't. It's, it's uh, yeah. as, as, as they say, you know, it's, it's yeah. uh, no, it's uh, it's free for all. Yeah. Fair game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think what I would what I would like to say is, um, I'd like I'd like to say like as someone who is more diasporan than I am Israeli, um, having grown up in Britain, but with yeah. that culture. Yeah. Um, it's definitely going to be easier to start in the diaspora. Absolutely. And once we, because we have easier access to the narrative that Israel, outside of what Israel is giving. Yeah. And I think by going to these movements and going to these protests and having our voices be heard in these circles and having the general public be aware that there are Jewish people and there are Israelis with these opinions that understand the origins of what the country came from and what the country is currently doing and the injustices yeah. of that. I yeah. think that we can start to have civilized conversations yeah. with people on both sides. You know, it was, it, was, it was very refreshing and encouraging to see mm. so many Jewish people mm -hmm. in New York in particular to come out mm -hmm. and condemn what Israel is doing Absolutely. and uh, them saying not in our name, mm -hmm. don't use our name, don't mm -hmm. claim this is a Jewish state. It's like mm -hmm. ISIS. Mm -hmm. ISIS claiming that we represent Islam and Muslims mm. and they were like a little tiny extremist minority. Mm -hmm. uh, that was committing these acts of violence and no, but terrorism. That, that also yeah. helped fulfill a Western narrative as well. To be yeah, fair. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so narratives are very important and they have to be made available to the masses. Mm -hmm. This is why as a historian, I what I do is I talk more about peaceful coexistence between the Jewish people and the Muslims mm. in general. Uh, because that helps people understand that there is no historic vendetta, mm -hmm. there's no historic enmity, mm -hmm. there's no historic, um, yeah. how can I put it, um, desire yeah. for that matter yeah. to brutalize the Jewish people oh, yeah. and take away their right of being uh, 
being or living yeah. for that matter. This propaganda, the evil propaganda the Zionist state has been using for a long time mm -hmm. to the extent that there are academics, mm -hmm. Zionist academics, mm -hmm. scholars mm -hmm. who have spent their lifetimes simply to study history and create a new narrative, the clash mm -hmm. of civilizations, for example. Mm -hmm. So what, are the, what are a, lot, a lot of the Zionists have been doing, they've been claiming this Judeo-Christian Judeo uh, Judeo, Judeo heritage, mm -hmm. okay? But it's, it's never been like that. Amazingly, there was no Judeo-Christian heritage. It doesn't exist. You know why? Because the Judeo, the, 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 the Judeo element was always persecuted in the West. Yeah. There was never a time in, in Western history when the Jewish people lived in peace. I, and I'm saying all the way up to the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Okay, even as late as... I mean, we have the Holocaust in Germany to talk mm -hmm. about. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is not the first time mm -hmm. when the Jewish people were brutalized. The history goes back a long time, a long way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, no, no, no. I mean, just to expand on that, the reason the diaspora is to the extent of it of what it is today, yeah. where you've got um, Mizrahi, um, Bet Israel, uh, uh, Ashkenazi, Sephardi, like you name it, yeah. essentially it's spreading to every continent in the world was a result of continuous displacement and and um, and removal. And Absolutely. Just, Wait, it, I mean that. That wasn't the case in the Muslim world. Mm. That is definitely the case in, in, the, in the Christian world. In Christendom, mm. Mm. the Jewish people had to move from time to time, from place to place, because they were being banished. Yeah, to the uh, whims of exiled. whichever the monarchy was thinking exactly. at the time. Like King Edward I, the famous mm. Edward the Longshank, mm. who was buried uh, mm. in Westminster, Ab West Westminster Abbey. Mm. Uh, the king of William, uh, sorry, not William, uh, what was his name? The freedom fighter, the Scottish... Uh, William Wallace, yeah, exactly, oh, okay. William Wallace. Okay. You know, there's this famous movie Braveheart, one yes. of my favorites, <laughs> yeah. one of my favorites. I all, the first time it came out, you know, I really loved the story, but it's mm. still a lot of fantasy there, right? Mm. That king, Edward I, was um, responsible for banishing thousands of Jews. Mm -hmm. English Jewry was completely wiped out. Mm. They were completely, uh, they, yeah. they had to leave England, mm -hmm. okay? And it was only later when the Jewish people came back to Britain. Mm -hmm. okay? So when the Zionists and they, uh, their dogs, if you like, mm. sorry, to use a very brutal term, mm. right? When they like to put out this narrative that there is a Judeo-Christian coalition that is dealing with this Islamic threat in the world, Islamic extremism, Islamic fundamentalism, yeah. Islamic terrorism, this is all a lie. Mm. It's all a lie. You're painting a civilization deliberately, and it's a it's a bunch of mm. it's a bunch of extremists. Mm -hmm. These Zionists, who are a very small minor minority within mm -hmm. the Jewish people, unfortunately, they have somehow managed to get a lot of Jewish people to their side. Well, it's it a, is very unfortunate. You know, okay. it's it's yeah. very interesting actually because yeah. um, you know, as, as someone who grew up in these circles, I I've seen both within Israel and within the diaspora. Yeah there has been a melding of the jewish state and judaism right and it has gotten to the point where to be jewish is to also support israel right and that's the narrative yes. that has been absolutely. created absolutely i think one of the one of the um one of the more, most difficult things i had coming into the, coming down this journey of like researching uh, my country's history and coming to terms with what's happened and everything um was first of all just take giving the other side a chance to speak for me to listen yes and secondly also to understand that there is a difference between my ethno religion and the jewish state right and one is not dependent on the other existing yes and and that's never yeah. the case even mm -hmm. in islam mm -hmm. as muslims yeah we don't say that a particular state represents the religion of Islam. That mm. would be a mistake. Mm. That would be a disaster. You know why? Mm. Because let's say that state decides to do something crazy, like what the Israelis are doing today to the to the people of Palestine, mm. right? Now that brings bad light on the religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is why, throughout our history, 1,400 years of mm -hmm. Islamic history, we have never claimed that a particular state definitely. Mm -hmm represents Islam okay um, or, or, or I must rephrase it there was never a state in our history that completely fully followed the rules of Islam to the I mean 
we can say the earliest period was the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, when the early Islamic expansion was taking place. But we had later dynasties, as great as they were, mm -hmm. as magnificent as their legacy is, mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, um, as tolerant as they had been mm -hmm. to the Jews and the Christians and others. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there were periods of uh, disturbance mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't say they, they, they actually represent Islam. Mm -hmm. okay. Apart from the very early period, the, the Prophet mm -hmm. and his earliest companions and caliphs, mm -hmm. we believe they were the best people to walk the planet. They mm -hmm. did their best mm -hmm. to, to do to as much as they could. Even the Prophet himself mm -hmm. was very fair with the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. People, a, a lot of the times people mm -hmm talk about one particular incident. I, yeah. I'm, I've, unfortunately, I've yet to read the Quran. I have a copy at home. I've just you must read. Open. You must read our yeah. perspective. You must read the Quran to start mm -hmm. with and uh, read the life of Prophet Muhammad. And mm -hmm. another thing I would like you to, to, to read is how the Jewish people actually mm -hmm. lived with the Muslim civilization for over yeah. a thousand years. Yeah. That's a very It's a narrative that's not talked about. It is a completely lost narrative. It's mm -hmm. only known to academics mm -hmm. and even those academics who specialize in it. Mm -hmm. If you go to any standard historian who studies history, let's say, of mm -hmm. Europe or mm -hmm. the Islamic world, they wouldn't be necessarily aware of this particular side mm -hmm. of the Islamic history mm -hmm. okay, or the Jewish history, let's say. Mm -hmm. okay? There are experts mm -hmm. who have studied it. Unfortunately, most of them are Jewish mm -hmm. and many of them are Zionist. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not saying only Jewish people uh, are responsible for this. I'm saying Muslims also need to study that history, mm -hmm. which I have done to some extent. And we need to put this narrative out mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't understand this. People think Jews and Muslims are basically two worlds apart and they don't yeah. They don't want to be with each other. They don't want to live with each other. This is this is the Zionist state of Israel. No. This is the narrative they created and they're pumping it quite successfully. There are people, I journalists, also, politicians who are pumping that politician, yeah. yes. I also think it's just ridiculous as well because like we're all following an Abrahamic religion. Absolutely, yes. And we're, we all have we the same, the same origin. We yeah. Claim, yeah, we claim the same origin, yes. I know, I, we know the differences, how the Jewish people practice mm. and believe in their religion, how, how yeah. the Christians went their way and the Muslims, yes, please. Yeah. Same question on the other day. What do you two think is the best way to for yeah, I mean that would be interesting. I have yeah. a perspective on this. That's a very okay. good question. That, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forgot your name. Tony. Tony sorry. Tony. Tony is asking this question. Okay. Yeah. Tony is asking this question that what is the way forward? What is the solution? Now we know mm -hmm. the history somewhat, mm -hmm. and we know the narrative of the the Zionist state of Israel, and we know how some Jewish people feel about the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, what is the way forward? Mm -hmm. Would you want to say first or shall yeah. I say first? Uh, please go first. I, I, think, I think the way forward is to first of all not have the Zionists to be part of the discussion. Number one, because there is no peace with the Zionists. They will never want peace, they will never promote peace. It's like having ISIS on a table discussing mm -hmm. peace with them. You're not going to have that. You're not going to have peace with a bunch of nutters who have committed a genocide. Would you discuss peace with Nazis? Simple question. After they committed the Holocaust. Okay. It's like me coming to the people, to the world, staying to the, saying to the UN or global leadership, mm -hmm. sit with the Nazis and discuss peace and give a piece of Germany to them. No, I would never propose. So the world has to wake up. The first step in the right direction is the world has to realize that Zionis, Zionism is poison. It's an extremist ide ideology. It is inherently racist. It is unfair, unjust, and it has to be confronted head on. Unfortunately, it's very powerful. It's very influential. It has many politics, politicians in its pockets, as we have seen recently, how all these presidents and prime ministers have been making these amazingly, shockingly, shocking statements like you know they have no no, no no i mean of course they are condemning some of the actions of the state of israel for example the british personnel who were killed recently mm -hmm. um, of the, um, world the the world the, the, the aid them. workers yeah. who were killed okay twenty thousand children have died to yeah. date yeah. okay many more thousands have been permanently disabled okay this is a genocide this mm -hmm. is an absolute genocide and the world feels very powerless somehow to express 
they're, um, they're discussed on this. So we have to, the step in the right direction would be to take control of the territory, remove the Zionists from the picture, and then sit with the Jewish leadership of the world, legitimate Jewish leadership, and the Muslims, primarily the Palestinians, the legitimate Palestinian leadership, whoever you may think they are, whoever you may think they are. You don't like Hamas, no problem. You don't like Hamas, don't sit with them. But bring the Palestinian leadership, legitimate Palestinian leadership, that represents the Palestinian people. Sit with them, bring the Jewish people on the table, and find a solution. Yeah. And the solution, if you want to apply democracy, sorry? Are you saying that leadership is the legitimate leadership of Hamas? No, I'm not saying, I didn't say that. I'm, I'm, we don't know. We'll have to find, we'll have yeah. to find out. Okay. So if, if the world wants peace in the Middle East, and we are serious about it, mm -hmm. Netanyahu has to be sent to Hague. He has to, he has to go to the Hague. He has to be put on trial, just like Saddam Hussein was pulled out Mm -hmm. of the, the of the whole literally mm -hmm. you know you saw the, the yeah. footage yeah. yeah Saddam Hussein was actually pulled out dragged out of the hole and he was put on trial okay mm -hmm. Milosevic and all those guys we managed to you know put them on trial for war crimes here mm -hmm. we have a war crime in front of our eyes mm -hmm. right under our noses right we saw a huge number of children completely decimated these are human these are human beings if I I mean I always talk about this if I took a cat if I took a cat today, right now in front of all these cameras, and I twisted the neck of that cat, mm -hmm. this lady, mm -hmm. this lady standing next to me, this very respectful, beautiful Jew Jewish lady, she would attack me first. She would say, what the hell are you doing? This is absolutely mad. This is crazy. Why I'd would like you do say, something like that, right? It would be a verbal attack. I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you, inter if you intervened physically, I would fully understand why you did that. Because you're doing the right thing. But we have 20,000 children buried alive, right? So something has to be done. So that's my solution. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, if, you, if I speak with the Muslim hat on, and Muslim hats come in many different colors and styles, yeah? Put anyone you like, any hat, any, any type you like on my head. The Afghan pakol or the, the long, whatever hat, right? If I put my Muslim hat on, I believe the solution is Islam. Uh, ruling as a political entity because for example I, I'll, I'll, I'll qualify I'll qualify okay it if, if, if Muslims are allowed to rule this territory because Muslims are the only people historically speaking who brought the three faiths together in harmony from the time Muslims took Jerusalem or the land of Palestine this is the first time when the Jews Christians and Muslims live together historically speaking who says so People like Karen Armstrong, okay, Karen Armstrong has written a history of Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. in, she, in that book she states, and I think page 242, she states, if I'm not mistaken, 240 or 242, she states that Muslims came with a system that brought for the first time three Abrahamic faiths under one domain in one piece of land together uh, uh, for the first time. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. I'm paraphrasing her words, right? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can. So we're going to come to her first. No, with the Muslim hat, with the Islam with, hat. With, with, yeah. yeah. If, why do I say that? When the Christians are ruling Palestine, they banished the Jewish people on pain of death. The Jewish people were removed from Palestine by Emperor Hadrian when the, the revolt of Bar Kokhba happened mm. in 132 CE. Right. The first time the Jewish people were sent into diaspora, mm. into exile mm -hmm. in the world was by the Romans. Mm -hmm. uh, Emperor Hadrian in 132 CE, when the revolt was crushed brutally by the Romans, the city was leveled, raised to the ground and renamed Elia after the emperor, emperor's name, he was named Elias Hadrianus. No, I'm not. The, the term Islamic State has become tarnished because of ISIS, unfortunately. Okay. So, so when people use this loaded term, they actually, yeah. what comes to mind is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well let me finish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come. I'm, I'm finishing right now. So, so when the Jewish people uh, got their power, I mean, technically, if, if Israel is a Jewish state, which I believe it's not, I believe it's not. Look at what Muslims did with Islam. 
for over a thousand years, they ruled this territory. Different dynasties, by the way, different dynasties, starting from the Caliphate, the earliest Caliphate, the Abbasids, the Umayyads, the Abbasids, and then the Ottomans, right? And the Mamluks, all of these dynasties ruled the land of Palestine and Jewish people were some of the most prosperous people in this land for all that time. We had rabbinical courts, we had Jewish merchants, physicians, philosophers, thinkers, right, living. It, it was only during the time of the crusade when all of this peace was disrupted. The crusaders came in, massacred the Jewish people, mm -hmm. massacred the Armenian Christians and the Muslims. So, so my, my, my claim is one of the solutions is, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tony, <laughs> you, you started me. <laughs> Yeah. My immediate concern would be, no matter what the previous generations have done, the generations right now who are locked into this. Yes. So the world needs to get involved. To <laughs> what extent? What's the best way forward so they can coexist now? The history you're telling. As as I said, the global international community, the Arabs and the Western world, they need to they need to wake up and smell the the coffee, and they need to realize if they don't stop this, it's not going to stop. There will be more genocides. There will be more wars. There will be more killing. The cycle of violence is the called cycle, a cycle and it may for spread. A yes. Yes. Now my solution I, I put forward. Okay. Right. Thank you for yeah. thank yeah. you for saying that. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think that um, with the experiences that I have, and I'm only one generation of uh, three and plus. Um, in the establishment and existence of the State of Israel. Um, I think we, we have a problem where um, there is such a strong narrative on, in, the, in the land of um, seeing Palestinians as an enemy and seeing as if we don't hit them, they will hit us, they will eradicate us. That, that creates that fear, that creates the, the fear-based response that they have. One of the most difficult things that would need to be done is just to sort of start to work towards changing that narrative in, that in the country and to start seeing that for those citizens that it's not, a, it's not us or them, it's about coexistence. Yes. It's about coexistence because for a lot of Israelis that um, were born and raised on that land, that is the only citizenship and the only identity and the only land they know. Yeah. And a lot Albeit of... Albeit imposed and absolutely. superimposed. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. And, but yeah. these, these people also don't have... Well, my, my people don't have control over previous generation's actions. Yes. They were just born and raised yeah. in a country that had a certain narrative and a certain amount absolutely. of censorship set upon them. Absolutely. The, I, this current generation cannot be blamed for the, the crimes of the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. We I, cannot blame Tony for all the crimes the British Empire committed <laughs> around the world. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. Yeah. So I think I think sort of um, extending on that um, a sort of re re acknowledgement of history and a re um, a, and a fresh approach to the to the to the education and understanding of Israel's history and an acknowledgement of the Palestinian narrative that isn't mentioned. Um, in uh in in the education system that's one of the first things to sort of talk about the second sort of approach would be like i mean in an in an idealistic in an idealistic way for to my in my opinion i would talk about if if israel was to have any form of like uh introspection and to like self-reflect and to understand like the amount of change that needs to be done and unimaginable amount of rules would need to be rewritten from the ground up essentially um, because there are so many rules that are in place that put Jewish people first, uh, Jewish rights first, Palestinian rights second, mm. um, that goes in both of those directions yeah, yeah. that is just as you said you know that is a racist standpoint and that is um, an unjust and unmoral standpoint so those would have to be rewritten as well and if we go super ideal in my opinion <laughs> like I did as well <laughs> yeah, if we if we go super ideal um, I think the uh, I think I do I also agree that it should be a one state um, I don't think a Jewish state is the answer hmm. I'm not sure if a Palestinian state uh, if an if an is um, Islamic state is the answer I'm, but not, I, I'm not even I'm not yeah. even 
proposing that. Yeah. Not that title, at least. No, not that title. Fine. And and okay. and, and yeah. I'll apologise for my it wording could, on it that. It could be. Then. It could be Ottomans too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ottomans uh, part two or something like that. I mean, uh, it could be anyone. Could be. It could, as long as as long as look, the point. I think yeah. we both agree. Yeah. That as long as the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians. Mm -hmm. And, and the and atheists, Jews and, and the atheists, Bedouin. yeah, absolutely and anyone, anyone, <laughs> anyone, all human beings yeah. can live in harmony, mm -hmm. peacefully, and there is law yeah. and order, mm -hmm. and law applies to all yeah. equally. Yeah. Okay. As long as that can be achieved, yeah. we're happy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Look, the problem is not all not all Jewish people are religious. Mm. Not all Jewish yeah. people actually follow the rabbinical version of Judaism. Mm. Likewise, not all Palestinians are religious. Mm -hmm. If you look at the the Fatah leadership, they're and not, not all very, Palestinians are Muslim. Yeah. We've got Christian Palestinians yeah, as well. It, yeah, we have Christian Palestinians, we have Muslim Palestinians, we have atheist Palestinians, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so so there has to be a solution yeah. that accommodates for I mean yeah. 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 No, they yeah. don't. Un yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. I, yeah. I think. I think. Um, so going down this uh, uh, rabbit hole of super idealistic, yeah. I, I think a secular one state where, the, from the laws of the ground up, that states that um, the Israelis that exist um, are allowed to. Uh, Especially if they so only why have does single it, Why does it have to be secular? I mean, if it's about, if it's about sorry, the legal I, system... I would, I would like to finish my oh, sorry, statement, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, <laughs> if that's yeah, all right. Because um, I don't want to be cut yeah, halfway I, I, when I'll I... Come back yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. come back on it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I would, so I do think that in, this, in, a, in a one state secular state um, that has um, made sure that the narrative is having the, the entire viewpoint presented of its history and historical wars and mistakes that were made um, that it should also from the foundation up say that both Palestinians have an absolute right to return and freedom to roam and freedom to uh, take uh, take land that was theirs and um, you know um, re-establish themselves there but also Israelis that currently presently exist there with considering that they they you know from as, as, as my example like down to my great my grandparents being around and that's the only the the only identity they have they they also in my opinion have a right to remain as well but uh, it, it's about having an approach of coexistence and equality yes equal treatment equal agreed yes uh, equal approach yes. i mean it's just and um you know i i don't know I, I don't have an answer for how to get to that point but i just agree i think that there a re-education needs to be done and a rewriting of so many laws absolutely. needs to be done. Absolutely. And I think pr we, we pretty much agree. Mm. And isn't that amazing that a Jewish lady and a Muslim man are agreeing mm -hmm. on these many of these principles. We may disagree on the model. Mm -hmm. She may propose a secular model, mm -hmm. which I think is impractical. Okay. Mm. I may propose an Islamic model because, because I have reasons to propose that model and she has reasons to propose her model, right? Mm. But we both agree that we need a model that brings different faiths, mm -hmm. different people together mm -hmm. and has a law that applies to all mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, the, 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 and there's another issue that is being neglected and ignored. There is a lot of trauma that will have to be dealt with. Absolutely. There is, there is PTSD. It's a big can of yeah, worms. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think it, one of the. Uh, so she's. Yeah, let, she was making a point that you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You just came no, right I now. Yeah? We have discussed it extensively. Yeah. For the, watch the video. Inshallah, mm -hmm. it's going to come out soon. There's going to be on. Yeah. I don't know how many channels, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but we have discussed it. Just my question. Yeah. What is the solution between them? What they need to do, Palestinian and, and Israel, in that country? We, we have discussed it in detail. 
Just yeah. now, we discussed it in, yeah. in the last 15, 20 minutes, I think mm -hmm. we discussed it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I think I've lost the point, the, oh. where, okay. where, where were we? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. We, so, we both agree that yeah. I spoke about history, how historically, uh, and under, under the Muslims, yeah. Yeah. the Jews and the Christians were living together in Palestine for a very long time. Okay. 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 That's my solution. I'm saying if we don't have another model, that works. Mm -hmm. We can go back to that model. Mm -hmm. How we will, how we will do it? Details can be discussed by people, relevant people. Mm -hmm. But I call the the original model to me is the model of my prophet, and mm -hmm. what what he left behind in his teachings. And when we did apply those teachings, why did the Jews pe why did the Jewish people survive for over a thousand years under the Muslim domain? The Jewish people, the Jewish people were the most vulnerable people as a community in the world. There are many reasons for that. Mm. Because of possibly indulging in usury, okay? A lot of Jewish uh, people were indulging in riba, what we call riba, usury, okay? And they were hated for that. Throughout European territories, one of the reasons why Jewish people were hunted repeatedly and hated by the masses was because of interest, because of usury, right? And that's why the kings had to protect. Yeah, the, I, think, yeah. I think when it comes to um, historical displacements, yeah. It kind of ends up in a way being a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy with um, in Judaism where when Jewish people get displaced and then move to a new, a new land, hmm. they establish themselves, but they also ostracize themselves yes. from the wider majority. Ghettoized. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they, they just sort of, you know, it's sticking to themselves from probably even at that point, some generational trauma. Hmm. But then um, the the um, native residents that are aware that the Jewish people have moved in and have started to work in the local economy and certain businesses, that at at norm, I would I would assume that initially it's a neutral standpoint to this um, group of immigrants coming in, and then typically when things started going wrong historically in one way or another, it was an easy finger to point to, and. Um, you know, Ashkenazi Jews were these strange immigrants hmm. back in back in the back in this era. It's just gotten to the point where whether um, Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, whatever, we've just assimilated into these local cultures. Hmm. The point that I'm white, you yeah. know, that I I look like this, yeah. and you know, and that's just. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I have and white privilege. There was intermarriage and conversions as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there were conversions, and a mm -hmm. lot of Ashkenazis do actually come from Eastern Europe, yeah. European territories. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's another issue. That's something within the Jewish people mm -hmm. themselves. And uh, these. But that, the problem is because not all Jewish people are following the religion. And just like not all Palestinians are religious, okay? I, so, think, yeah, yeah. I think the religion is, does create a really good moral standpoint to build up from, but it's also really important to write laws. Yes. It's also, it's also really important to write, write laws. laws. And no, no it, I think it, there's two separates. There is a moral and religious law, there's a moral and religious law, and then there is the rest. Uh, the separation, I think, is what can hold in, in a court of law. The separation is, I think, what can hold in, what can hold even, in a court of law. Even the term court of law can be relative because, uh, because the, Jewish, the Jewish people could have their own courts, bed dins. Mm -hmm. okay, the, the Muslims have their, uh, the court of the Qadi, mm -hmm. the Muslim judge. Okay? So, I mean, if you're in a secular country, then the laws are secular laws mm -hmm. and you're in a secular court. But okay. even secular so, countries, mm. I mean, the idea of what morals are, mm. and my opinion, mm. they stem from religion. Religion... Well, to, to, uh, to an extent, yes. They, they, well, the moral, moral standpoints and ethical and, and questions of, of what is ethical and what is moral, uh, religion, just as, just as a question in, in context, just sort of brings, brought to the table for early civilization, yeah. what is okay for a just society. And the, the problem with secular yeah. societies is that the laws keep changing mm -hmm. by the, the changes of the society. Okay, so people... Is that people, necessarily a bad thing? Uh, it could be sometimes, because mm. sometimes you will make laws that don't necessarily uh, represent represent the the interests of the people, the masses. 
Well, okay, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, this, uh, this issue of um, males ending, ending up in female toilets because there is this... Okay, okay. I mean, there are many... There, there are, okay, okay, I, I, I agree, I agree. It's gonna open another, another discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree, yeah. I agree. But I'm saying, look, Look, when, when people change, societies change, mm -hmm. okay, sometimes societies come to agree on things that are immoral. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Germans predominantly were fully behind Hitler. Mm -hmm. When Hitler was doing what he was doing to the Jewish people, mm -hmm. the Ger he had the sympathy of the, the majority of the German people, not all Germans, of course mm -hmm. I know that. Okay, just like today, Abby Martin is claiming mm -hmm. that the Israeli people mm -hmm. are predominantly, the overwhelming majority is behind the state and the actions of the state now if they start making the, the reason why mm -hmm. the israeli state is getting away with these racist apartheid laws is mm -hmm. because they have managed to convince the majority of the mm -hmm. the israelis mm -hmm. uh, as to the correctness of these laws yeah i mean the fact and, that and they... this is the problem with secular model mm -hmm. okay. this is what my issue is mm -hmm. when you have religious texts okay their morality is determined Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all, all already established. You cannot make something immoral stated in the scripture uh, uh, and make it moral. It's not going to happen, right? Because mm -hmm. pens have been listed, pa uh, lifted, papers are dry. So you cannot change divine law or God's law. But with secular system, mm -hmm. with, a, with a secular solution, that threat will always remain. If you manage to convince the masses mm -hmm. on, 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 on a disaster, on a catastrophe, yeah. or on a racist law, mm -hmm. like what happened in the American South, mm -hmm. okay, yes. with, yes. The, with the, with the, with the, mm -hmm. the Afro-Americans, mm -hmm. and all the lynchings, and yeah. all the, the so-called emancipation yeah. and post-emancipation, mm -hmm. this is, yeah. I mean, I... I Right. Okay. Okay. Now, well, I. Ethically, I take far more issue with you politically. This is fantastic. <laughs> I think everyone's loving it. Yeah. Right. I'm. The ethical assertion you made is against all the fucking up stages. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think we're digressing. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I think we have pretty much expressed our views. Yep. And we agree on a lot of things. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what's your name? Tao. Tao. Yep. Very happy to talk to Tao anytime mm -hmm. in the future. You, if yeah. you come to the park. We'll continue discussing. We mm -hmm. need more people like you. Yeah. We need more voices, Jewish voices. The voice is growing. The voice is I, growing. So I, wa I want people to be aware yeah. Yeah. that the diasporan voice is very much growing. And even in Israel, even in Israel, the voice is growing. The minority is coming out and people are starting to talk and people are starting to listen. So make sure you, you listen. You let us listen as well. Please. Absolutely. And this is why we're doing this exercise. The reason why mm. we're having this conversation mm -hmm. is going to get out to potentially hundreds or thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah. and I hope people can hear these voices. Mm -hmm. You're a Jewish lady. I'm mm -hmm. a Muslim man. Mm -hmm. we ha we've had a very friendly conversation. Mm -hmm. We agree on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So this perception out there that there is conflict, this enmity, this is a lie. Mm -hmm. This is not true. She's an educated lady. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to learn somewhat. Okay. So we, we have a long way to go mm. and we can bring back that coexistence, that, that feeling of compassion mm -hmm. and generosity and justice towards each other mm -hmm. that once existed among us. And we really have to look to the future. We have to plan mm -hmm. for the future mm -hmm. and, and talk more, represent our views more. And we want more Jewish voices. We want more Jewish voices to come forward and start speaking the right thing, start saying the right thing. And there are many, as, as, mm. as uh, Tal, yeah pointed yeah. out and we saw lately uh, on the news as well that many people mm -hmm. are being uh, being being heard and they're coming mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and I'm very glad to see that especially the the American mm -hmm. uh, Jewish community that came out in New York they mm -hmm. made us proud mm -hmm. okay and we hope this can continue mm -hmm. and eventually there will be a day when we will see peace again in the Middle East inshallah yeah. on, Hashem. <laughs> on that note thank you so much thank you so thank you. much my, my pleasure i cannot i yeah. cannot yeah, know, okay. islamically I, yeah. i'm not allowed to have physical contact i apologize i wasn't aware <laughs> no, no, but no, thank no, you very no much worries. but but thank you so much thank yeah. you very much thank you